I just brought my <clears throat> breakfast bowl over here, I guess. Put it in here. Ah, there's Brian's caked on with food. I'm going to get coffee here in a bit because I forgot that I started laundry. Look, I have a kitty at the door. I forgot that I started laundry, which I started laundry at 5.30. It is now 7.33. And one load should be out of the dryer by now. I should be folding it. Nope. So now I got to go in here. Yes, this load should already be washing. This load I should be getting out of my dryer. But I started um, watching YouTube videos and answering messages. I went on Facebook. I had five messages. and So then by the time um, you start talking back and forth to people and everything, I completely forgot that I started laundry and... My washer and dryer, they make that ding, ding, ding sound when they're done. It did it, but I just wasn't paying no attention. So, anyway, I'm behind. I got to start on my laundry, and then I got to go get dressed, and I got to start my day. Because today, it's time to decorate in the dining room. And here is the fog from the outside in the front. And you can see the trees with the leaves that are changing colors. My um, neighbor's maple trees across the street, they're already a pretty like orangey auburn color. And um, the big tree here is an elm and it's um, probably about three quarters of the way changed. And then the maple that's in our front yard, it's just now starting to change. It's probably about halfway. And then, of course, my hostas are dying off. My hydrangeas saying goodbye for another year. My roses have already said goodbye for another year. And um, this flower pot's doing really good. This one, that's my clock over there. This plant here, um, I think the frost got that one. For some reason, it didn't get this one. I don't know how. And um, the plant on the rocking chair also uh, was hit with the frost, which that's a begonia. And I have begonias in that pot, and the begonia that's in that one in the front is still, it's still going. <clears throat> so, anyway, but, yes, it's a pretty autumn day, and today is Halloween. And these girlies will be barking tonight. And why? Because the little trick-or-treaters are coming, aren't they, Lulu? Are they going to come and ring our doorbell? And you will be barking. Oh, my goodness. Hi. I'm still yawning. Oh, what's that truck? A landscaping truck. Anyway, it's time for me to go get dressed now. Did you like... Mommy having the door open. You're going to look out the little window now. Always have to kick that door when I go to lock it. Adam should be leaving for work. I think he left. Did he leave? Did you leave, Adam? I don't hear it. There he is. There goes his car. I told him to be careful because... <clears throat> uh, October into November, uh, the deer traffic is very, very heavy. <laughs> They're out running around a lot. Um, is it breeding season or some? I know they have breeding season in the spring, but I think they do it in the fall too. Anyway, there's a lot of deer traffic and they say October in Pennsylvania is like the month that you really see a lot of dead deer on the side of the road and we have, but um, it usually goes into the early part of November, too. And with it being a very foggy day, um, you know, you got to drive with caution. 
So anyway, Chloe's already headed upstairs. She knows I'm going to my room. And pretty soon I'll be able to stand here at the stairs, look over there and see my Christmas tree. And I'll have my Christmas tree here. And then I'll have my Christmas tree over there where that chair is. So anyway, it's time to move on to my room and get dressed. Harry came home yesterday from work and he had to work late because he had meetings and when he came home I had the tree on and I had this garland still on and um, he was quite happy anyway this is what the tree looks like without the lights showing it with the lights yesterday you can't really uh, see because the trees all gold and I decorate with a lot of gold and um, so yeah you can't really see too much so now you can see the ornaments. I should just, you know, kind of go around the tree. You know, like how I talk about, you know, setting ornaments back into your tree. Because it helps to cover up any, like, um, holes. You know, sometimes with these artificial trees, you get the, the holes that can be seen and that sort of thing. And um, see, like, I have an ornament back in there. And when the tree's lit, like, you can't see everything. You know what I mean? So, there's only one thing that's bothering me, and that's this ribbon here. How I have it crossed over this geo mesh. Maybe if I have it looped up or something, but the way that's hanging down, I gotta do something with that because that's been bothering me. So, anyway. And I do decorate all the way into the back. There we get the light off in my room, so it's kind of dark. Good. You're getting up because you know. What about this? Are you coming downstairs, girlies? I'm going. Bye. They'll follow. Okay, so I'm going to go down and get another cup of coffee. Hopefully my dryer will be going off here pretty soon and I can get the first load of um, clothes folded and throwing stuff away. My garbage man's supposed to come today. I wonder if I could take that bag out or if he's already come. I don't know. I need to go out to my freezer and um, that's cold coffee. I need to go out to the freezer and get some ham because I'm making scallop potatoes and ham today. And then while I'm waiting for um my dryer to go off so I can fold clothes. I'm going to read my Bible for a bit. I'm going to finish making out those Christmas cards and get all that away. And then I will start decorating in here. So, and then in between, you know, loads of laundry, um, Uh, I'll just get everything done today, I guess. So anyway, it's 8.17. Usually by 8, 9 o'clock, I have all of my laundry done. Not today. And these lights, I'm going to try to do this today, too. <clears throat> I have my um, little firefly lights that are up there, my little country. I call them kind of firefly lights, too. They have like nine different settings, but they fade in and out. And I keep them up there. After I take all my Christmas stuff down, I put those up with all my chickens and my barnyard stuff up there, and um, which I've shown that. But um, anyway, for Christmas, I take all of those down. Then I have to put up um, new mini One lights. One more thing, because when I was coming back in here to put my camera down on the table, I walked by my staircase, and I'm going to zoom in because, see, my dogs are hams. And they know when the camera's pointing at them. And then they move. But look at the cuteness upstairs. <laughs> Ellie, you are so funny. And I don't know why this camera sometimes gets so blurry when I try to zoom in. But anyway, Ellie is sitting on top of Chloe. Okay. How funny. Okay, I came out to um, throw a bag of garbage in my garbage can that was full from yesterday. 
I didn't know if the garbage man had come, and they didn't, so that was good. So, and then I remembered we bought mulch. I got to go put mulch down. And um, for anybody that was reading my Facebook post about um, needing to have my wheelbarrow uh, wheel changed, um, we got that at Lowe's too the other day, and Harry's going to put that on tomorrow. So now I got to carry these two bags of mulch back. There's Kelsey. Pretty girl, I know you want to go in the house. You're just going to have to wait. <clears throat> okay, so, and I got another little puppy. Oh, I got two puppies. Okay, get back. No, you're not coming in this way. We have to take this to the backyard. And my burning bushes, these are just starting to turn. The ones over at the school and the other ones that I filmed um, when I was going grocery shopping, Last week, um, they were all really, really red. And in here, uh, see the pine? The um, pine needles, as new ones start growing in the front, um, the other ones turn that like brownish color all over the tree, and then they begin to fall. And this is why we don't really mulch over in this area because of the pine needles always falling, and it kind of creates its own mulch. So, and my spireas are starting to say goodbye. Their leaves are doing that where they kind of change color a little bit and get little spots on them. And um, I think that happens when the frost comes. And then they'll, they'll go away till next so spring. So you see where the um, mulch always gets worn away? And I actually need probably about four bags of mulch here. But I just grabbed two for okay, right now. Okay, you want to come in? Come on, Chloe. Be good girls. Go right in the garage. They know what to do. They're so trained. Okay. So, we're going to go in the house now. Come on. My coffee was cold, so I had to get another cup because I did some things. Um, that load of laundry was done, so part's there. The other part's there. And um, also, while I was in my laundry room girlies had dog food and stuff on the floor but my carpet was getting dirty over here which I need to put down now and um, I swept and mopped my floors so now I'm going I got my Christmas music on so now I'm gonna sit down read my Bible for a bit after I put my um, carpet down and put this away and then um, after I read my Bible I'm gonna make out my Christmas cards okay it is um, about 12:30. And um, I'm finally finished with all of my laundry. They're in the baskets. And um, my friend Kim called me. I haven't talked to her for like years. We, um, between me moving, her moving, things like that, you know how you lose touch with people even though they're still your friends. And um, anyway, we've reconnected since, um, I want to say about... A year and a half two years ago on Facebook and we just always just chatted there so um, anyway we exchanged phone numbers and so she called me today and um, I spent a couple hours talking to her which was very nice look my garbage men they're across the street can you see through there and I don't know what that truck is doing but it's going ka clunk ka clunk ka clunk it's making a loud noise okay phase one of the dining room tree is finished this is old school tree this is the kind that you gotta um, connect them in back there and you kind of got to fluff as you go that's what I do some people put them all on then they fluff but it's harder that way so to get a nice full tree I find if you fluff and then connect them on it makes your tree nice and full you don't get a lot of those bare okay spots. it's taking me about two, almost a half hour to string the lights. I have three strands of lights, but to get way back in there and hook all the lights, believe it or not, um, that takes some time. And just standing, they're doing that just a little bit. You can't tell, but I'm actually starting to sweat a little bit. So anyhow, I'm gonna take a break. I gotta wash my hands. I hate that feeling that you get after you do lights and stuff, but um, I'm gonna get dinner ready to get it in the oven here soon. And then I'm gonna come back and finish the tree and the next thing I have to do is put um, 
geo mesh on it and then I've got to get like all of these picks and things to put on and the beads and then it'll be time for ornaments but I love Christmas lights they're so pretty and these are those um, random sparkle I like them I've been buying this this is the third year I've been using them um, I like them because some of the lights are stationary they never do anything and then you see the other ones that there'll be like a twinkle like these two are twinkling and so the you know random sparkle meaning you know some are stationary every now and then you see the twinkling so I like that okay I'm gonna show you um, how I make my skull of potatoes so um, if I'm making it just as a side dish then it's just the potatoes the soup butter salt and pepper but when I'm making it as like the main meal it's gonna be a casserole with ham um, I just get these little round slabs of ham and I just cut one up I have all my potatoes peeled and what I'm going to do is layer everything I'm gonna put some potatoes down here slice very thinly a few slices of butter put that on top then I'm gonna get salt and pepper salt and pepper that and some parsley too and then grab a little bit of ham put it on top and then just keep layering and then when I get done layering I put okay my so here is the first layer just to show you and then I'm just going to continue doing that with all of this until it is gone. Okay, a lot of people use different types of soup when they're making their um, their scalloped potatoes. <clears throat> I've even done it uh, homemade by making like a cheese sauce but I find the two soups that I like to combine okay let's go over them first. Some like cream of mushroom, some like cream of chicken, there's cream of celery, there's now that um, garlic roasted mushroom I like that too sometimes I use cream of potato um, but I always like to get the cheddar cheese soup and I use a can of cheddar cheese and the other one that I like with it is cream of celery okay so I dump the soups in here I like to put water in my can and kind of stir it up a little bit with the same spoon that I'm getting the soup out with to get as much of the soup out of the can as possible. So I take one can completely full of water and mix it and put it in. And the other can I go about, you know, three quarters of the way, so probably about right down to there with water, mix it up and put it in here. And then I whisk it all together till it's a sauce. Then what I'm going to do, take this pour it over here you're gonna cover your casserole you're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about um, I go for about two hours uh, it's gonna depend on how thick you slice your potatoes but even when they're sliced thin I find two hours is always really good so uh, it's 225 now so 430 okay this now I'm gonna to make apple crisp I have this nice little tool that you just shove it in the apple and you lift this and the core comes out so what I'm going to do is slice my apples and I'm going to be layering um, so you need about five apples you need a casserole that's been sprayed in a bowl you need one cup of brown sugar one cup of oats one cup of flour and at the bottom here we have one stick of softened butter which we're just gonna mix this up you know like you were doing like pastry until you okay, get that's a what crumble. You have here now in making apple crumble you should be using apples that are a baking apple you want to use um, like Honeycrisp, Jonathan, um, Macintosh, uh, Fuji, Pink Lady any of those kinds of apples that are especially for cooking because or baking they're a softer apple a wine sap is not a soft apple um, really even Granny Smith's though some people like to use Granny Smith for the tartness Granny Smith is not really so much of a soft apple and red delicious and golden delicious some people use that in um, apple crisp but that's really a snacking apple it's not really for making pies or apple crisp or anything like that not even making apple butter or whatever so I have here I think this is a combination of 
um, a pink lady and uh, some honey crisp. So I just slice it and in half, I'm going to slice it in half again and then I'm going to take each of these and just do like this. So I'm going to get my, my apples thinner than that. Probably, you know, about like that. And of course I'm going to be doing it over my casserole. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do half of the apples and make a layer. Then I'm going to get some of the crumb mixture, half of it, and put it through here. Slice the rest of the apples on here, the rest of the crumb mixture. If you're using a cooking apple, okay, so a soft apple, you don't need water. If people are using water in their apple crisp, it's because they're using something like a Granny Smith or a wine sap, a harder apple that, you know, it's going to take that steam from the water to cook it down a little bit. So anyway, no water. Okay, so I used five apples, so I needed two and a half here and then two and a half for the top. So this is what you're going to get. And it's enough to cover uh, a casserole. So we want half for the top and we want the other half crumble in here like so. And sometimes people put butter in their apple crisp. Again, if you're making a topping um, that's real fine and powdery or something like that, um, then I can see using some butter. But if you're using the combination that I gave you, so this is like sticky, like a, it doesn't stick to your hands, but it's like a dough, okay? Um, use the ratios that I gave you. Um, there's enough butter in this crumble mix. You don't need any butter to put in there. Okay, then your second layer of apples should look like this. And then we're going to get this last bit of topping on top of here. Then what I'm going to do is get uh, some aluminum foil and I'm going to co cover this completely and I'm going to put it in my 350 degree oven for 45 minutes to an hour and um, I say 45 minutes to an hour uh, because again it depends on the type apple that you're using um, you know like if you use the Jonathan apple I think of all the apples I think if I remember correctly Jonathan is like the softest of your apples and so if you had uh, Jonathan apples that you were using in here you wouldn't need to cook it for an hour or 45 minutes might even be too long. Um, cooking time always depends on the type apple that you're using. So I'm going to cover this, put it in 350. I'm going to set my timer for 40, 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to take it out of the oven, lift the foil. If it looks like it needs to go back in, um, then I'll time it from there. I'll let you know how long it took. Wow. I'm sitting here doing the math and it's like, unbelievable um, this angel and you can see she's got green at the base there um, the light that I just took out was uh, white but this angel I've had her since I was pregnant with Carly and Carly's 26 now I got this um, when I was selling Christmas around the world so this is the 26th Christmas that I've had this angel and the light just finally burned out on it. I'm like amazed. So anyway, I just thought I had to show that. That's like unbelievable. So yeah, 26 years and the angel's just now going out, but she's back on now. Okay, the tree is coming along. I'm not finished yet. I still have um, these ornaments. I still got all these ornaments to put on. I've got bows to put on. Then after that, I need to vacuum, get all the stuff off of the carpet and the floors here, put the tree skirt under the tree. And then after dinner, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the nutcrackers out. And um, my oven went off because my apple crisp is done. So I'm going to pull that out so you can okay. see what that's. At the apple crisp, 
I can tell it needs to be in there for probably about another five, five minutes or so. You can see it's done around the edges, but having the foil on, the crumble hasn't browned up yet. And you can always tell if your um, apple crisp is done, you should be able to take your fork and just poke through your apples. So there, my fork's going right through them. So you can, you can see. So um, five more minutes just to brown it up. Okay, and so done. just. Okay, so I let this go six minutes more. So you can see it's done now. You can see how it's bubbling. And if, see, it's bubbling. If I tilt this, you can see where it's like liquidy. Okay, um, and it's got like where it's making like its own filling, almost looking like apple pie filling. Again, this was adding no water. This was adding no butter. The only butter was in the crumble. And again, it has everything to do with the apples that you're using. So, um, again, if you're using a harder apple, such as a Granny Smith, a wine sap, you know, uh, you can look up apples online and you can see which ones are the best ones for baking, the best ones for making applesauce, um, and that sort of thing. But the ones that are really for baking, they're a softer apple. And so, um, anyway, whenever I'm making apple pie, I'm making apple crumble, I strictly stick with baking apples. Even when I'm making fried apples, I make sure that they're baking apples because I want them to cook down. Again, harder apple, you know, it, it doesn't really get soft. And if it were to get soft, you would have to add water. You'd have to cook it a long time and so forth. So anyway, this is apple crumble. There's my tree from the kitchen view. It is 426. And I vacuumed in there. I'm getting ready to dust very quickly and put my nutcrackers up. And when I go upstairs, I need to take my laundry up. I haven't done that yet. And then I am going to try to um, put the lights on that tree that's in my bathroom and redecorate. It's a small tree. It won't take long. So I did those two trees today. And... All right, I took out my apple crisp. I just took this out of the oven just like a minute ago. So let's open it up and have a look. Steam. So you can see it's still bubbling. Whoops. Um, so that water that I put in, it's one can and almost another can. It's like three-fourths of the second can. Um, that's pretty much about enough. How many potatoes did I use? I might have peeled about eight, eight good size um, potatoes. And then I have my ham in there and the parsley with butter. Because the butter will make the gravy with the soup there. And it's the same principle with the apple crumble. I didn't put any butter in it. Um, but the butter that's in the crumble mixture itself, as you know, it's heated up, obviously it's sinking down and the apples are making its juices. It's releasing the juices, I should say. And then when it, um, infuses with the butter dripping down from the crumble mixture, then it does like its own little apple pie, um, filling. And here, I will show you. I'll get a little bowl here real quick, and I'll show you what this is like. I'm only just going to take out a little bit. Whoops, some of that fell down. So, see, it's almost like apple pie without the crust. So, there it is. So, that's how I make apple uh, crisp. That's how I make my scallop potatoes. One thing that I didn't put in the scallop potatoes that I normally do, but I was kind of in a rush because I'm decorating today. Um, as most people know, my family, my boys, I should say, they don't like cook on onions, but I do put um, 
onion powder like I'll sprinkle onion powder in there so if you like onions you can put onions in there if your family's like mine they don't particularly care for it but you like the onion flavor because see I like onion flavor see I'll just get the onion powder and I'll sprinkle it in between the layers okay so it was uh, 1238 when I started to uh, put my tree up because remember I told you my friend called and we talked for like a couple hours so I got a later start this morning um, it's 511 and I'm finished. Um, these smokers and these couple ornaments here, they go in the family room, so I'm just going to leave those there for now. Um, and a couple of my nutcrackers had little things that broke off of them. I'm going to get my wood glue and glue those on. So the only thing that has to be done in here other than this being taken away when I put my foyer tree together, then that will be cleared out. Um, my lighted garland that I put up here, it's in that great big red box that's in my kitchen that's where I have a lot of like my garlands and everything so anyway I will show you with my nutcrackers and my tree I'll do a little close-up of the tree and those nutcrackers see this digital camera it puts these lines I don't like that so anyhow that's um, with the lights on real quick I'll just show you the Christmas tree I'll just kinda like go around so you can see every little detail Guess I should get closer up so you can see all the ornaments. And this will be nice when I'm doing my open house and of course you hear the holiday music. But anyhow, okay. So that is the tree with the lights on, and I'll turn the lights off. There you go. And just to get a little close up so you can see everything. See, I love these random sparkle lights because your tree's just lit, and then you just get that ever so cozy, gentle uh, twinkling here and there. I get those um, twinkle lights at Lowe's. I don't know if I mentioned that. I mentioned that, you know, I, I like those lights, but I don't know if I said where I got them. Okay, so now it's going to be time to eat dinner. And after dinner, I've got to take this basket upstairs, put it away. I got to get, oh, my Christmas lights are upstairs. And then um, I'm going to be decorating my tree in the bathroom. I've got to take all that off. And um, that's probably all I'm going to do today. I was thinking about um, taking care of the tree that's in the office because that's not going to take long to do that, but I'll do that another day. So uh, it's quarter after five and that burping in the background, I got the movie Elf on. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, it's time to eat dinner. Little trick-or-treaters are going to be coming in about an hour. So, um, and it's been a cloudy dreary day all day so I'm going to say goodbye until tomorrow